this recording will capture what's in Blackboard for Social Work 611, legal and ethical issues in clinical social work. So it is my intent to cover Blackboard in detail to give you a refresh of where things are in Blackboard. So I'm going to first start with what's in the Getting Started page. As you look at the Getting Started page, you'll see that I have posted the syllabi there. You also have the course outline already there. You have my instructor's information that's available to you. This is an example of a discussion, as I told you before, when you look at the discussion posts in the master's program, we're going to expect you to be a little bit more thorough. Uh, we're going to expect you to use uh, critical thinking as you respond to the question. And we're going to also expect you to use uh, evidence-based practice. And that means that you are referencing your, your posts with a peer review article or a textbook or uh, basically uh, any supported article web page that actually have been uh, researched and proven. So I'm not looking for basic assumption without validating some form of evidence-based practice. Of course, you have the rubric for the discussion, and you'll find that in the discussion, we're going to be grading a little different in the master's program uh, compared to what we were doing in the BSW program. In other words, uh, if you fail to respond to a peer, you may lose points there. You're going to lose points there. Uh, if you didn't respond to either peer, you're going to find that you did not pass that portion of the uh, assignment. So it's very imperative that you post your initial reports on Thursday and respond to two of your peers on Sunday uh, before 11.59. Failing to do so would result in you not being very successful in your discussion post. So we're looking for you to, like I said before, apply critical thinking process, use evidence-based practice, and we're looking for you to actually adhere to the APA standards. This section is the assignment summary, which is also in your syllabi. I just went on and put it in the Getting Started page, which would remind you earlier. I have some APA uh, handouts. <clears throat> As I said before, you do have an APA template that's going to be available to you to use. A lot of people like to use the the Microsoft Office APA template. Uh, I just recommend that you also use the manual to make sure that they are basically referencing in accordance to APA standards. <coughs> Excuse me, there's a link there also for library instruction resources. Uh, and then I give you a, a sample writing tip uh, for social work students that you can take a look at on how to post. I, I recommend if you're posting your discussion and you fail to use uh, the APA standards uh, in validating your response, look at how some of your peers did it and it'll give you an idea. I'm also going to be looking to make sure that you reference your material in accordance to APA standards. So here again, you may leave, lose points if you fail to reference your uh, posts uh, in accordance to APA standards. So like I said, we're going to be more attention to detail. We're going to be expecting more from you as a master level student. <laughs> Purdue Hours, another site that's there for APA, and it'll give you an idea of what to expect there. Okay, so I recommend that you, you look at everything on the Getting Started page as I provided to you. <coughs> Excuse me. As you click on the next link, you'll see that it's a syllabi. So here again, you will find a copy of the syllabus, which is also on the Getting Started page. The next section is a sort of welcome that I gave to you along with uh, my bio post that gives you a little bit more information about me. Uh, so just uh, be aware that that's just there for information about me. As you go on to announcements, 
announcements is where I'm going to be posting from time to time information. You can expect another month announcement to come out today about uh, the MSW orientation, which would be a link that probably leads you to to go to meeting. Uh, we felt that that might be a better avenue to actually do this at six o'clock today. So be on the look for a a link that, that leads you to go to meeting uh, so that you can be able to uh, open up an uh, orientation that's scheduled for the day at 6 p.m. So uh, you will probably receive that email shortly. The next slide is your Blackboard Messenger slide uh, for students. And you'll see that I already have one message in there. And basically, that is a message from me uh, reminding you about the orientation today at 6 p.m. And so you'll probably get another one that talks about the link that leads to go to meeting for today at 6 p.m. You have your course calendar. Be mindful that the course calendar is something that you can utilize to give you an idea when things are due. Now, you'll find that there are two courses here, 611, so you'll have, I mean, 602, and then you'll have the 611, and then you have the uh, orientation that's coming up for today. Uh, so it's going to give you an idea of what to expect when you look at your calendar as far as when things are going to be happening. Uh, the next slide basically is my grade slide and it'll give you a description of all assignments that's post. If you look at this and you don't see a grade here and it's already past the suspense date, then that means you missed an assignment. So you probably want to make sure that you follow the dates when things are due and that you are keeping up with, with your assignments. Okay, I told you before that Ivy and Ivy is a, a mine. Uh, I mean, it's a ebook. And it's, it's posted with MindTap. So when you click on uh, textbooks and MindTap, this is going to lead you to your book. Uh, and then there's some information that it's going to ask you to do. And then you'll gain access to your textbook. Uh, most of you should have already done so. Uh, this course was open to you early this morning. So you should be able to have that done. The next uh, portion is discussion. Now, you'll see that I have all the discussions already listed, but when you look at your discussion uh, section, you're only going to see the first two for this week. And if you look at your syllabus, it tells you when this week starts and when it ends. So you have your introductory assignment that you're going to be posting uh, today sometime. Uh, I'll be looking at that no later than tonight and responding to you. Uh, in regards to your uh, first posting, I want you to get an understanding of what the grading process is going to look like early so that you can make corrections when you get ready to do your discussion post too. Now, I, I, I've had students from time to time tell me about discussion posts and talk a lot about, well, it's my own words. Well, what do you mean it's your own words? Everything we uh, write about uh, is either validated by something that we have read, that we have learned, and so it's based on something. Even if you cite a poem, uh, that poem came from someplace else. It wasn't yours. And so, therefore, you needed to reference that. From time to time, I've had students uh, quote parts uh, of the Bible scripture and tell me it's their Bible and that they don't need to cite it. Well, that's wrong. Okay, so you should be looking at the first two discussion and then on Sunday of this week at 11.59, week one discussion will end and you should see week two discussion comes in no later than midnight on Monday morning, uh, about one minute after midnight on Monday morning. So you will be seeing this from week to week as we go. I recommend that you read the discussion thoroughly, that you actually answer all the questions that's asked of you, that you use APA uh, referencing standards, that you make sure you check out uh, to ensure that you don't have any grammatical errors. 
uh, because all of these is going to be a form of losing points as you go through this process. So the next uh, link is going to lead you to your paper's assignments. And here you're going to see all assignments. You can see it on my version of all assignments that's required of you. But what you're going to see is when assignments are due. So the first assignment you're going to see, I think this is due in week two instead of week one. So if you look at your syllabus, it'll tell you. No, it's due in unit three as you're looking at this, the case study. Uh, again, you have your example of case one study. Then you have your rubrics for case one study. I recommend that you look at the rubrics because it's going to help you also uh, write the paper, uh, write the assignment. Uh, so when you look at the rubrics, it'll tell you everything you need to be adhering to. I just clicked on the rubrics link and I'm waiting on it to come up so we can look at it. And I can show you some pointers that you're going to be looking at when you look at the rubrics. So it should be popping up anytime now. But again, I, I must stress that you need to be thorough in answering all of the assignments uh, to ensure that you don't lose any points as you go through this process. So here's the rubrics when you're looking at the rubrics. So it'll tell you what the percentage are and what you would get if you were to look at these assignments. So you see you have the APA analysis uh, that's weighted pretty heavily when you look at this. So again, be mindful of what's an A, what's a B, what's a C, and a D and an F. So remember, in this program, you can only get two Cs, and then they're going to ask you to leave the program. So what I'm trying to tell you is that it's important that you adhere to all the issues there. If you look at this rubric, and for the first one, clear explanation of key strategic legal issues, okay? So it shows superior knowledge of the issue, key problems, and the company that present the situation, and the strategy issue, the effective executive summary. In other words, your writing of how you respond to that assignment. Okay, so this will help you in writing the paper and give you some ideas on what you should be doing. So as I say, uh, under papers and projects, you won't see this assignment until week three. Your week four assignment comes up uh, shortly after that. Uh, so just be mindful to follow the calendar and look at the, the weeks. And it'll help you address all the questions as they come up. Okay, uh, here again, the next link is going to be tests and quizzes. As you look at the tests and quizzes, I told you earlier that you're going to have a pre and a post test uh, for this particular course. And I also told you that it would not be count. It would not count towards your final uh, course grade. This is an evaluation tool that's put in here to assess how well you're doing as you look at the materials through the course. I do not expect your pretest to to be 100 or uh, what, have, what have you. There are 20 multiple choice questions to choose from that which you're going to be taking. And let's say you scored a 60 on the pretest. Then, of course, you know by the time you go through the material, your score in the post-test should be much higher. So from time to time, I will be asking you uh, through forms of email about certain uh, pre and post test questions. So under tests and quizzes, that's where you're going to go at uh, for your pre and post test. Your pre test should be done within the first two weeks of starting the course. Your post test will be done at the end of the evaluation course. The next link, what, what I always tell students as they look at Blackboard and they go through the assignment that they look at each week. So we are in week one now, which ends on Sunday at 11.59 of this week. So when you look at week one, it tells you everything that you should be doing in week one in the first block. The second block tells you you need to do a discussion post and what the discussion post involves. And you'll see that your first discussion have more than one question in it. And you need to respond to each question. As I said earlier, I recommend that you use a Word document 
and upload it into the discussion post. That way I can evaluate your response in writing and give you feedback on that. Uh, so even if you use a Word document or responding to your peers, then I can give you feedback as we go. As I said before, <clears throat> this course is focused on your ability uh, to write very well. Uh, it's all also depending upon your understanding of the course material. So you have your week one, uh, basically the showing up in week one. <coughs> After Sunday, we will be moving to week two. As you click on week two, it tells you everything that's due in week two. Uh, you can see you have your APA quiz that's due in week two. Uh, and all that is is a, a multiple choice, true and false question that's centered around the APA writing style. Some of the questions may be asked in different format. Same question, but asked in a different format. Uh, you can see your discussion post is due on Thursday, your initial response is due on Thursday, and your response to your peers is due no later than Sunday at 11.59. So you have a discussion in week two, you have your readings of the DSM-5 uh, for uh, depression disorder and anxiety dis disorders, and then you have your APA quiz, which is centered in week two. As we move to week three, you'll see what's all the things that's listed in week three in the first block. You have your first case study that's due in week three, and then you have a discussion post that's due in week three. As we go to week four, which is the halfway point, you'll have the, in the first block, you'll see all the things that's due in week four. Uh, and when you go to each assignment, you see you have a case study two that you need to complete in week four, and it gives you some information on how to go about doing that. You also have your week four discussion. And when we get to week five, it lists the same thing. Everything that's due in week five to include individual's assignment. You'll see in week five, you have your client feedback note, which was some uh, examples on how to go about doing that. Uh, so that's in week five. When we go to week six, week six, you have everything in the first block that's due. And then you have individual assignments that's due in week six, where you have your discussion assignment, your media myth and reality rough draft paper that's due in week six. And it gives you some information on how to go about doing that. And it tells you what you need. Now, remember, it, it's asking you to complete... Uh, one five to seven page paper utilizing four, four peer review reference. I don't mean Google reference, peer review reference. So I recommend you, you utilize the library to assist you with some of these things. If you don't, you have the library resources that's available to you. But I recommend every student when you're writing a paper that you try to utilize the library for some form of feedback to ensure that you are meeting APA writing standards. I know when I was in the PhD program, you know, I, I sit on pins and needles waiting on a grade and a response just to hear that I didn't plagiarize in any of my discussion posts and any of my papers. And I didn't relax until I actually got that grade where the instructor basically was telling me in the sense that I didn't plagiarize anything uh, because that makes a big difference. You know, in the PhD uh, program, if you plagiarize on an assignment, you're out. So if you, if you spent uh, two years in this and you plagiarize in your third year of your dissertation, yeah, you know, that's a lot of money wasted. So here again, I, I recommend that you utilize the library resources. Now remember, the discussion, correction, the cover page and the reference page is not counted in that five to seven pages. So if you give me five pages of data, then you're going to give me a total of seven pages when you look at the discussion and the reference page. If you give me seven pages of data, then you're going to be looking at nine pages total with the discussion and reference page. So don't give me five pages and count the, uh, the cover page and the reference page as a part of the paper because it's not. 
okay and this is just an example of what you can expect as you go through the process with uh this assignment it gives you an idea of what you need to be doing uh suggested interview questions that you can use uh and it gives you some information about the paper as a whole so be mindful to follow up the instruction thoroughly that you have a good understanding so you can respond in appropriate manner be mindful that you need to uh, reference this information it tells you how many references you should be using it only asks for four but if you give me nine that's fine uh, that tells me that you research a lot of information to actually apply into this this process okay so let's go back up to week seven as you click on week seven it's going to tell you the same thing uh basically what's required through the whole week of seven uh you have your discussion then you have your presentation that you have to put together slides that actually have all of this information and you're going to be submitting this uh in blackboard to me for grade uh, so just be mindful of that and as you go back to papers and projects it'll tell you where you're going to be submitting it so you can have this assignment done and i'll go back up to papers and projects to make sure that we have this presentation assignment there week eight uh it's a list of all the things that's needing to be done in week eight uh and it tells you about the textbooks that you're going to be using uh and also uh it talks about the reaction paper that you're going to be doing in week eight uh, so just be mindful to read the directions completely and have an understanding of what you're being asked can you finish this course without re reading the textbook no you're going to find that it's going to be difficult because some of the new assignments that's in this course uh, in this program, you're going to find that even me as your instructor is going to be reading the textbook right along with you to make sure that you're responding appropriately and we're doing the same as we give you feedback uh, in regards to the material. So just be mindful that you have to read the assignments uh, and the textbook so that you can answer the, the, the assignments applying critical thinking to support it with evidence-based practice and basically uh, being thorough as you answer each one of the questions. So what I tell students as you go through each week, click on the week that you're in and it'll tell you everything you need to do in that week so you won't miss any assignments. Uh, again, things happen in life that requires that you miss an assignment uh, you may miss an assignment i recommend that you reach out to me as soon as possible and not wait until we get in week seven or week eight and tell me that you had a problem in week four uh because there's very little i can do uh for you when you look at that you'll find in the master's program that very seldom you will see things being reopened for you to post an assignment it's not fair to your peers it's not fair to the program and so uh you know applying time management skills is important as we go through this course when you click on collaborate then they, under course tools uh you'll find that this is where you can join the room uh, where I might post a discussion, but if I were to do something in Collaborate, a uh, discussion of the chapter in Collaborate, I will send you an announcement to let you know I've done so. Uh, as we go on to the next level, uh, Supplemental Material was the next link. You'll find that there's nothing there, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, website links. <coughs> I have the link there for Purdue Owl. I also have it on the get, Getting Started page for you. Uh, as we go on to the next link, you'll find that I have a Study Mate link there, but it's nothing there for you. This is just if, you know, I wanted to put you in a group format, I would have you to study. Okay, as we move on down the line, uh, you have your resources with Blackboard Help uh, that's available to you where you can click on the link and ask a question 
uh, probably will give you some assistance about Blackboard if needed. I recommend that you click on this link because what I have in this link is basically the CSW core competencies that's going to be available to you. Uh, I recommend that you uh, click on this link, you open up the document, and you print this out and put it in a binder so you can be using throughout the course. Because with this is a listing of all the core competencies that you have available. So for example, let's say you're doing, you're in field and you're getting ready to do your learning plan. Well, your learning plan is gonna be based on competencies. So let's look at competency one. So you would be saying competency one, I'm gonna be doing this. Here's the behaviors that I'm gonna be exhibiting through the process of competency one. And here are the tasks I'm gonna perform. So it might be uh, understanding use of self, might be something that you're gonna do and feel. Being able to look at you as a person and look at the client's viewpoint about uh, cultural differences, uh, belief systems. Uh, so you're gonna be developing a learning contract and, and when you get a feel, you're gonna have plenty of time to actually learn how to develop a learning contract. It's just that the things that you do in, in this program, in this course, and other courses are gonna be able to help you with that learning contract. So you're gonna hear a correlation uh, between field learning contracts and activities and uh, different course assignments. So here again, I recommend that you print this out. You have all nine competencies according to CSW, CSWE standards uh, for core competencies 2015. So print this, put it in a binder, use it as your reference. Uh, so that this is one link you definitely want to click on and research. The next one is looking at the NASW Code of Ethics. Uh, so in this, you'll see that I have uh, the Code of Ethics book. You can order this book, you can buy it, uh, what have you, to assist you with this process. Uh, but considering this time, uh, with the virus that's going on, a lot of agencies are not opening. So they're uh, interviewing and meeting with their clients in a virtual format. Well, in, in the Code of Ethics, one of the things they talk about is the use of technology and the need for confidentiality, amenity. So those things you need to adhere to. I'm, I'm supervising a student right now for the University of New England in the master's program, and she is doing her uh, field at South Carolina Rehabilitation and Rehab Center. So they're seeing some clients live, but the clients have to go through the agency protocol to come in live. And then they're seeing some clients virtually. So she interviewed a client in virtual format. And so when I critiqued her interview with that client, one of the things I talked about was the importance of her utilizing confidentiality in regards to uh, interviewing the client via online and being at home with people in the same household. So, in uh, ensuring that they were not privy to the client's information. Uh, also, that they look at amenity to ensure that they were not talking about the client uh, where she lives, her name, per pervading where someone else can actually get access. Also, it's something as simple as the way her screen, computer screen was situated when she was interviewing the client to ensure that nobody is in the house walking around and, and hearing the information. Uh, think about you doing an online course at home and you have people in the house and you're online and someone in the background asking questions or, or listening to the conversation. Well, that's a violation of HIPAA, that's a violation of confidentiality. So here again, this is another book that I recommend that you uh, actually uh, purchase or you can print this and put it in a binder. Some of you should already have it if you're coming out of the BSW 
program. I know one of the things that I did at the Charleston site is I ordered this book for all social work students. I paid for it and then they compensated me uh, after uh, I paid for everything. So all they did is, is paid me the money I paid for the book back and they got a hard copy of the book. Now it was completely up to the student. You could have went online and get this uh, information because it's online, uh, but this is actually a binder that's already there. So you're looking at the online version of what's there also. So you don't have to purchase it. You can just utilize the online. I recommend that you print it out. It's only 36 pages and it'll give you an idea of uh, the NSW Code of Ethics. Okay, also with this course, you know, I want you to also be mindful of the South Carolina Code of Ethics because sometimes there are differences between the South Carolina Code. Well, I wouldn't say differences. It, it may be a little confusing because what the state of South Carolina is looking for and what NSW uh, w is looking for is, is, can be a little different. But just also keep in mind, so it might be a good idea to go online and type in South Carolina Code of Ethics and understand that. Of course, practicing social work, uh, you can only adhere to the NSW, CSWE, and South Carolina Code of Ethics to ensure that you are doing everything which is eth ethically standard. And remember, you have the HIPAA also that's there now. So, you know, doing work and having clients information available when you're in field that someone in the household may be able to see, you're in violation. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Uh, as we go back to Blackboard, so I kind of give you an idea where everything is at in Blackboard. Definitely start with the getting started page. Uh, I said I was going to go back and look at paper assignments and look for the PowerPoint and where you need to submit that. And you'll find that that is here under papers and assignments. So this is where you're going to submit your PowerPoint presentation uh, for this assignment. So you have a written assignment, rough draft, and then you have your uh, PowerPoint presentation consist of the slides that you need to have available. Okay, that's going to end this recording. I'm going to be emailing this recording to you along with the syllabi and course schedule. Uh, I recommend that you listen to it in detail so you can have an understanding of what's expected of you, my expectations for the course, and feel free to notify me if you have any questions about the assignments. You can email me, and remember I said that it would be to your advantage to call me by the cell that I provided. Uh, if, I if I don't answer, just leave me a message. Even if it's 10, 11 o'clock at night, just leave me a message. Let me know who you are, what course you're in, and what your question is about. And I'll, I'll return your call and we can have a discussion at the appropriate time. So just be mindful that I'm here not only as your advisor, but I'm also here as a support for you to work through this course uh, and through the program as a whole. Uh, you're the first cohort coming through the program. You're going to set the standards for the people who are coming after you. Uh, your information and the data that we received from you going through the course will be utilized and look at in accordance to accreditation standards for CSWE. So it's important for you to be on top of your game as we go through this program. Uh, it's not intended for you to think that this is a difficult program. Uh, learning should be fun. That's the way you should view it. I sent you a a link the other day in your email regarding uh, expectations about going through graduate, going through a graduate program. And I talked a little bit about learning. I talked a little bit about uh, the APA standards. I talked about compliance. Uh, so if you haven't reviewed that, I recommend that you do do that so you can have an understanding. Uh, as you listen to this recording, I recommend that you write down any questions that you may want to discuss with me at a later time frame. 
This recording is just to assist you and have a better understanding of what is expected of you. I may do a series of recording of other things as we go through the process. Remember, I'm here to help you uh, through your journey of this program. So I'm going to go ahead and end this discussion. Uh, I also told you that you will be receiving a link a little later on that talks about the, the MSW orientation uh, that's going to be in to go to meeting. So you'll have that also. Uh, and I will also post an announcement to let you know that that's there. So let's go ahead and end this recording. And I'll see you in the course room as we go through the program.